this data set, really what I wanted to look at is, I don't know if we've all seen this where we've got these, um, these issues with, uh, there's a bad there's a bad link somewhere. And in core, what I would do is I'd, I'd sort by error, fix the one with the worst error, uh, re-register sort again, and just keep doing that. Um, the main difference is when you seem to hard to ch to chase one of these down and register 360 plus, usually it's somebody has done something like this. See how every scan is leveled. With the RTC 360, the leveling that it does is if the scan head is within 10 degrees of level, it will apply level based on the IMU to within 17 seconds. Uh, of, and that's with uh, good practices if a scan's leveled in 10 degrees. Um, that's a great feature. But the thing to keep in mind is you don't want to do that every scan like it's done here. Because let's say 17 seconds is a pretty wide range. It's good enough for one scan and for quite a bit of distance. But let's say it got plum out 10 seconds. That's within 10 seconds. And scan one is 10 seconds. Scan two is 10 seconds the other way. That's 20 seconds. If I do, if I remember my math correctly, 20 seconds at 100 feet is a is a hundredth. So that's six millimeters of tilt that it cannot. It's constrained from adjusting that out of these scans at 100 feet. And these buildings, if you look at these, I think are some of these are more than 100 feet. And so let's also look at top down. This one had a lot of issues. Uh, this is raw import. This building is ghosted. Let's kick it in the true slicer so you can really tell. So I think somebody was looking at these scans here and they got the wrong bump outs on this because there's a whole, these, so you have several scans coincidental here and then you have the same building and then different layers of incorrectness. And actually these, I can, I've already been through this data set with the fine tooth comb, these are tilt errors because uh, probably usually what happens is Either it wasn't within 10 degrees, so it didn't get anywhere near 17 seconds of accuracy applied on the tilt. But also, one thing to keep in mind with the tilt on the RTC 360, where it's IMU based, if it is sitting next to some source of electromagnetic interference, it can be perfectly plumb and it might pull it off of plumb. So what I what I tend to do is I look around, look up, look down. If I'm in a good space, I'll do a high accuracy tilt scan here. I might do one here, and I might do one here. And that way I get it, if you should average out to quite a bit better than 17 seconds across the site, because I did it three times, but it allows each individual scan to adjust and massage that tilt out between the network between scans. Because the first thing I can do 200, and this is quite, a, this data set's got a lot of problems, but the first thing I did was um, toggle off the tilt told it to not constrain the tilt and I got it down the well about eight thousandths a hundredth and obviously I had to go through and fix all these coincidental issues but that's that's another key takeaway with the tilt is if you don't unconstrain that the software is unable to free up that z-axis to get a better numbers and if, if it's locked you can fix these uh, five foot displacements, but you're still going to see 200s, 500s, and it's just going to kind of rubber band around because it's getting the best fit it can with the tilt that is in the data. Um, so let's talk about uh, control for a second. Now, on this site like this, if I, uh, you can lock or unlock your scan to scan. Now, whether I'm using Total Station or GNSS, I always lock to begin with and then apply the control. Because if it's Total Station, I'm going to suspect that it's better than my network of scans. Because if you know how it works, like this is brick buildings, it's asphalt, you're very accurate. But by the time you go from one, two, three, four, five links, even if it's seven thousandths per link, they don't add up. But say they did, that's three and a half hundredths across this uh down this and you can get much better than three and a half hundreds if you set a total station up and shoot a prism so the total station is going to be more precise a little more accurate than your scan data on best practice but if you lock this and you say you have five or six control points that you're going to constrain it to um if your delta jumps up on one say a tenth well that's a pretty good indicator that there might be a prism constant or if it's half a foot let's say it's probably got a measure up problem with that target so i like to lock first to get a qaqc against my uh 
my scan data for the total station data. And then when I apply, if I get something like uh, 3 hundredths, then I'm going to say, well, that pretty much matches what I would expect to get with the accuracy I have between each link and what I'm getting out of my least squares adjustment for my survey data. So then I, I delete the ap application and control, I unlock and I apply control, and then I, that floats it out and locks it. And conversely, if this was VRS at Urban Canyon, you probably wouldn't even try to do GPS. But the uh, if it was sub centimeter, I just leave it locked and let it distribute that error out to the control points. 